Hey everybody and welcome once again to Can Do Entertainment Presents May the Force Be With Who and this is gonna be an all Who episode and yes I know and it's become a catchphrase of the show thanks BBC and what am I thanking the BBC for because there is no new Doctor Who until Christmas of this year that's right we get no brand new Who until December the 25th of this year now you might be saying well how am I gonna get a Who fix until Christmas well you might say hey I could stream Doctor Who on Netflix and maybe get caught up with all the modern series yeah maybe you could up until earlier this year when Netflix removed Doctor Who from its lineup so once again thanks BBC or maybe you could watch some classic Doctor Who episodes hey maybe you could stream those on Hulu you could until earlier this year which come on everybody at once thanks BBC so how to get your who fix well you could cosplay dress up play with who toys or maybe find somebody that's got some classic who on DVD which I happen to so I was gonna do maybe one story per each classic doctor but I'm sorry I do not have any uh, stories on DVD for the first Dr. William Hartnell or the second Dr. Patrick Troughton because I didn't need to because there were several episodes available on Hulu and I could just watch them on Hulu but I can't anymore now so everybody one more time thanks BBC so um, if I did have to recommend any stories for William Hartnell or Patrick Troughton um, for the first Dr. Uh, William Hartnell, I would go with An Unearthly Child. It is the very first Doctor Who story, and the first episode alone where you finally get to uh, see the TARDIS in uh, the junkyard at Totters Lane, and you get to meet the first companions, uh, his granddaughter Susan, and Ian and Barbara when they kind of force their way into the TARDIS, and the first time a companion ever sees the whole bigger on the inside gag, and, you know, William Hartnell's speech at the very beginning about being cut off, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good first episode. It kind of sets the tone for the whole series. Now, the other three episodes in the story, kind of involving cavemen and fire, is kind of meh. But for that episode alone, and I've really only seen three William Hartnell stories, I, I would recommend An Unearthly Child. Now, moving on to the second Dr. Patrick Troughton, and I am planning on picking up this story on DVD very soon, would be The Enemy of the World. Now, this story was recently found uh, back in 2013, the year of the 50th anniversary. It was found in a... Uh, storage unit or somewhere in Nigeria on a shelf along with the uh, web of fear. The uh, Enemy of the World is a great six-parter. Uh, Patrick Troughton plays the dual role of the second doctor as well as the villain uh, Salamander, a uh, megalomaniac that's a dictator want to conquer the world. Uh, it's a really great story. It's got some high production values for that era in Doctor Who. Cannot recommend it enough. So First, Dr. William Hartnell, go with an uh, 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 Sorry, I need to buy a vowel, and it's like almost 2 o'clock in the morning. So if I slur my speech, I'm sorry, I haven't been drinking. So, first, Dr. William Hartnell, an unearthly child. Second, Dr. Patrick Troughton, go with the enemy of the world. Okay, now, on to DVDs I actually do own. So for the third Dr., John Pertwee, I chose The Planet of the Spiders. Now, the interesting thing about Planet of the Spiders is that it is John Pertwee's regeneration story and it's also the first story in Doctor Who that we ever even heard the term regeneration because up until then it had always been referred to as a renewal or a change of appearance so this was the first time that it had ever been you know, brought into the lexicon as an actual regeneration so that alone makes it interesting and the whole second episode is nothing but one big long chase scene you know John Pertwee was the whole kung fu fighting man of action Venusian Aikido doctor and you have a chase scene involving a gyrocopter the, his roadster Bessie there was a uh, speedboat the flying who mobile a um that uh, little things uh, hovercraft i mean it's about an 11 minute chase scene now the the main plot of the story is that uh on a previous adventure uh the the green death the doctor had taken a blue crystal from metabilis 3 and tried to give it to his uh departing companion joe grant well the crystal is returned 
to the doctorate unit and basically there are these giant spiders on Metabilis 3 with uh, psychic abilities and they want their damn crystal back and they're doing everything they can to get the doctor to return their crystal and you know it's a big long tale involving some monks and unit and Sarah Jane and uh, Mike Yates returns so it's it's pretty good story plus it's you know John Pertwee's final episode so for John Pertwee, Planet of the Spiders. And just a little side note, John Pertwee's son, Sean, plays Alfred on the Fox series Gotham. So, and he looks just like him. I mean, if you put a wig with some more hair, he'd look just like his dad, John Pertwee. So, Planet of the Spiders, third Doctor. All right, moving on to the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, Robots of Death. Now, this story comes from the uh, 16th season, the uh, right at the height of the uh, Philip Hinchcliffe, Robert Holmes era, the whole gothic era where, you know, everything was kind of a mismatch of horror movies and gothic tales. And this, this one is kind of a murder mystery, kind of like a, like an Agatha Christie, Ten Little Indians type, where the Doctor and Leela land on a sand miner on an unnamed planet, which is primarily crewed by robots. It does have a small human command crew, and the human command crew start dying one by one by one. And originally, the Doctor and Leela are thought to be the murderers, but as it turns out that, hmm, no, the robots of death, that, hmm, maybe the robots are the ones doing the murdering, and hey, who made the robots murder? It's a, it's a really good tale. It's Tom Baker at his height, at the height of the, you know, the writing, the production. It's a really great story, and at the very beginning, there's a nice little scene with the Doctor and Leela, where Leela's asking the Doctor, you know, hey, why is the TARDIS bigger on the inside than it is on the out, and there's this whole little trans-dimensional engineering. So it's a really good tale. Robots of Death, one of my favorites. Okay, moving on. The fifth Doctor, Peter Davison, who is my favorite Doctor, first Doctor I ever saw on TV. And it's another regeneration story, The Caves of Androzani. Now, this one was also written by Robert Holmes, who was the script editor during uh, the Robots of Death era, and this story is fantastic. Now, I know what you're probably saying, oh, it's cliche, it's The Caves of Androzani, everybody says The Caves of Androzani, but this story is awesome. I mean, from the direction by Gray and Harper to the cliffhangers in part one and part three, it is just an awesome story. And the villain in this story, Sheriff Jack, is just, he's, he's not just your run-of-the-mill villain. There's some real great acting in there by Christopher Gable and the mask, and it's just a great story. The, basically, the Doctor and Perry land on Androzani Minor, and through just basically sheer dumb ass luck they get caught up in a in a war between the military from androzani major and a army of androids that are uh controlled by sheriff's jack basically over something called spectrox which actually turns out just to be like some souped up noxzema which is supposed to be you know the most strong or most powerful most important substance in the galaxy and it's just to keep these people from growing old and the Doctor and Perry are um, infected early on by raw spectrox, which gives them both spectrox toxemia, and they're dying. So like I said, this is Peter Davison's regeneration story, so it becomes a whole thing about trying to get the cure for the spectrox toxemia before time runs out. And um, Peter Davison has said in many interviews since that his regeneration scene he thought was some of his best acting ever, but unfortunately his companion Perry, Nicola Bryant, happened to be leaning over him at the time they were shooting, and her cleavage he felt upstaged his great acting. But this is one of the greatest stories in Doctor Who history, classic or modern. Uh, back in 2009, it won the Doctor Who magazine poll, came in as the greatest story ever, and I think in 2014 when they did the poll again, it came in at number three. It is a fantastic story, one that I cannot recommend highly enough. All right, moving on to the sixth Dr. Colin Baker, I've got the twin dilemma. Like, like hell I do. That's a whole nother video. All right, no, I have the two doctors, which um, actually I'm cheating a little bit, and Patrick Troughton is in this as the second doctor, so we get kind of two for one. We have Colin Baker as the sixth doctor with Perry, and we have Patrick Troughton returning to the role for the third time. He came back in the three doctors, he came back in the five doctors, and he returned here again in the two doctors, along with a companion, uh, Jamie, played by Fraser Hines. And this story, once again, is also written by Robert Holmes. Now, it's not quite up to the standard that the Caves of Androzani was, but it's still a good little romp. Basically, the second doctor and Jamie 
are trying to appeal to a scientist about his experiments in time and then they run afoul of uh, some Sontarans and the scientist who has basically taken a, an inferior race called Andragums and made one of them a genius and the Sontarans and the mad scientist Dastari and the Andragums are planning to remove the doctor's knowledge of time travel so that they can use it for their time experiments and it's up to the sixth doctor and Perry and Jamie to save the second doctor. Now, um, some of the reasons why I like this story is because there's some beautiful location work that they shot in Spain. Um, just the fact that Patrick, this was Patrick Troughton's last appearance as the second doctor. It's one of Colin Baker's less manic appearances as the sixth doctor. And he's also out of that hideous Technicolor rainbow jacket for most of this story. So the two doctors, it's a good doc. It's a good story. You get two for one. You get two doctors for the price of one. It's got some action, and you know it's Robert Holmes, Patrick Troughton, Colin Baker. It's a good story. Check it out. Okay, and finally for Sylvester McCoy, the Seventh Doctor, I have Remembrance of the Daleks. Now this was the first story from the Silver Anniversary 25th season, and it was also the first story that showed the character of Sylvester McCoy's Seventh Doctor as not being the spoon-playing buffoon that the first season of his Doctor was and more trying to reintroduce the character as more of a darker, more manipulative, pulling strings kind of Doctor. Basically, this story is almost like a sequel to An Unearthly Child because we return to Shoreditch in London and we return to uh, the, the junkyard at 76 Totters Lane, we return to Coal Hill School, and it's basically revolving around the doctor trying to keep a stellar manipulator from getting into the hands of two separate Dalek factions. It's called the Hand of Omega, and there's some um, really good callbacks and kind of a few end jokes referring to you know the series itself and Sylvester McCoy is probably his best performance as the doctor his relationship with Ace has probably never been better than in this story well maybe for the, with the exception of the curse of Fenric but I don't own that one but I own this one so um, like I said remembrance of the Daleks and uh, there's a great speech at the end where Sylvester uh, the seventh doctor is confronting the Dalek Emperor and I'm not going to give the spoiler away, but, you know, it's a great scene. Probably his strongest outing as the Seventh Doctor. So, recommend this one. Check it out. And uh, as far as the Eighth Doctor goes, there's really only two choices. The 1996 TV movie or the 2013 short Night of the Doctor with Paul McGann. And um, basically, I'd have to go with the uh, 2013 short Night of the Doctor with Paul McGann because that basically was, it was awesome. And uh, the 1996 TV movie, you had all those continuity errors and Eric Roberts as the master. Yeah. So anyway, this is just a way to maybe, you know, try to deal with not having any who till December of this year. Thanks, BBC. Everybody, you know, it rolls off the tongue. Thanks, BBC. Um, also wanted to point out that the 500th issue of Doctor Who magazine is also out on newsstands here in America right now. So if you get a chance to pick that up, there's like a bunch of posters and stickers and some really good articles in it. So, you know, it's got Peter Capaldi on the cover, you know, with a Dalek. It's, it's really cool. So you might want to pick that up. And there's also a brand new novel featuring the 10th Doctor and Donna Noble, which is my favorite TARDIS team of the modern era and it's called In the Blood and I will be doing a review of that after I buy it and read it. So um, yeah, that's going to wrap up this video. So thank you for watching and may the force be with who.